What up guys, it's Chris. Today I wanted to talk about mint and lime LEDs in today's moving lights and LEDs. Um, this week I was on a job where I had used a brand new fixture and I was using MA2 and I had mint and lime LEDs. Um, the default MA2 profile only had RGB coming to full, so when I brought the fixture to full, it brought kind of that Mac 101, Mac Aura type uh, white that's kind of more purple than anything else. Uh, come to find out a little more research, uh, a little reading the manual, and uh, it had amber, mint, and lime LEDs. So I just kind of edited the profile a little bit to be able to have control of those. And um, by the end of it, I ended up getting a really nice white out of it. Uh, however, after I kind of edited my profile so that when I, you know, hit add at on the console and, you know, all of the colors came up, RGB, amber, lime, and mint, uh, then the color mixing didn't really work at that point. Uh, not at least on the MA side of things, because MA only thinks in kind of RGB type of things. They did not take into account any of the other um, color parameters that we had going on, which kind of messed me up. So my workaround was to kind of just make a color that I liked in RGB, um, and then I just kind of added the wheel there. So one of the problems when LEDs first came out was they were just RGB. So when you would grab an RGB... Uh, fixture and put it at full sometimes the output would be a little more purpley than kind of a natural white per se um, a white that we might be used to looking at would be you know a white from a source for Lico, a source for par a par can um, or even kind of maybe like some sort of moving light that has you know uh, a lamp in it while we could get really good saturated colors out of LEDs, we still had the problem of not being able to make an excellent white. Um, further down the road, manufacturers started adding amber chips to the mix, uh, and they started adding white chips to the mix. Now, this kind of helped. Um, it added to the spectrum a little bit. However, anytime we added white to, say, any color per se, it always desaturated. And that's not exactly what we as designers always want. So why do we use mint and lime LEDs? Uh, I just wanted to kind of take, uh, kind of read this um, line uh, word for word exactly from an ETC video, but color experts at ETC knew that the lime spectrum was not only very bright to the human eye, but it was also a natural component of many hard to reach colors, even at full saturation. So what does that all mean? If we take a look at this ETC uh, video, we can kind of see what, you know, uh, the spectrum of a normal kind of RGB fixture. So if we kind of go ahead and scroll through a little bit more, uh, there they are talking about the lime kind of spectrum that they found and that they've added. And now what happens is you have all of this more color. So I believe when ETC came out with this in 2014, they had just um, touched on the lime spectrum. I believe now they're up to like this uh, X7 color mixing series, which has like uh, lime and cyan and deep reds and indigos and, and all these different things. So they're actually up to the by eight color mixing. Um, I think with the Series 3 luster, they added the deep red, bringing them up to 8. Just really quick to kind of show you that in MA, we have a Source 4 luster. So if we just take a quick look at our patch here, we can see um, it's just one luster. It's a Series 2 luster in direct mode, strobe on with the fan uh, DMXable. So this will take us to 10 channels. Um, these are going to be patched the same way in EOS as they are in Grand Domain. So if we grab our luster here, you can see that it kind of defaults to uh, RGB at full. And if I just kind of move it around, we can see, you know, for example, this might be green um, kind of at full. But it doesn't exactly take any of the amber values into account as I kind of move throughout the spectrum here. If we go to color mix B, uh, you can see it definitely does not take any of the indigo, cyan, or lime uh, kind of into the uh, color mixing, which is unfortunate, but that's just kind of, I guess, how MA thinks. Hopefully, MA3 will alleviate this kind of issue, as I really don't see this issue going anywhere 
moving forward. So uh, here we are on the EO side of things. Um, again, we have the same luster patched. You can see as I move around the color picker here, um, the indigo, the cyan, the white, all of those channels kind of are being taken into account. Um, so with all that said, we're at the end of 2022, moving on into 2023. I personally think a lot of these new fixtures, these new moving lights, these new LEDs are going to have significantly more color channels than RGB. You know, a lot of fixtures now are RGBA or RGBW, um, but I think moving forward, we're going to see a lot more lime, a lot more mint, maybe indigo, you know, things like that. So that was kind of a basic, basic overview about why we're kind of using the mint and the lime LEDs within our moving lights now. Um, I'm going to link a couple of articles and some ETC videos in the description that kind of helps explain it a little bit more. Um, those are the resources that kind of helped me kind of wrap my head around what was going on. And uh, hopefully this kind of helps um, you guys understand how Grand MA2 uh, versus ETC EOS kind of thinks about the uh, color mixing.